Parshas Truma, you know, the, the Parshas change a little bit. We just began now. We began last week, so to speak. Um, a little different style Parsha from Parshas Noya straight through all the Parshas and Bereshis, all the Parshas and Shemois um, until Mishpatim. A lot of quotes, sort of like stories, things happening. And you would think that now that we discussed the laws last week, which is an amazing Parsha also, but this week Parsha's Truma, there's no stories in Parsha, but it's chock full of everything. It's loaded with beautiful, beautiful drushes and things to learn and life's lessons. Uh, really unbelievable Parsha. And the Torah, at the beginning of this week's Parsha, the Torah mentions the building of the Mishkan. And the, the building of the Mishkan is spoken of in great length. The, the Torah goes to great length to speak about and repeat and give us the command how the Mishkan was built and then how they did build it and what they did. And it's, it's a very lengthy Teruma, Tzave, Kisisa, except for the small break for the Parsha of the Egel, the Vayakal, Pekude. We keep on rehashing and going over all the different things that took place in the Mishka. We know, anybody who learns Gemara knows, and we actually discussed this, and I'll remind you in a minute at the beginning of the Seder Barashas, but anybody who learns Gemara knows that in the Torah, every word, every letter is Eis Cheshben. Every letter, the Gemara we had, you could go through a full daf of Gemara just to say, is there an extra hey? What we learned from an extra vav, an extra word. Uh, uh, the, every single word is precious. Every single word is meaningful. And yet, you see, it comes to the Parsha of Mishkan, and we just keep the words, we just keep on saying it and repeating it and everything, right? When, we, when did we talk about this? We spoke about this also in the Parsha of Eliezer, of when Avram sent Eliezer to go find the Shidduch, right, um, for Yitzchak. So in the Parsha, when, when Eliezer went to find Rivka, so we actually spoke about it here. We see how the Parsha is, goes through great lengths to tell the story. Then he goes through it again when he was repeating, when Eliezer, Ebed Avram, was, was repeating what happened. We go through the whole story again. Look, Rashi over there. Rashi over there says, Yofa Sichos and Shalav De Yavos. We see how how beautiful and how important it is, even the Sichos on the conversation and the happenings of the Av De of uh, of Eliezer. In other words, what Rashi is telling us over there is how much we could learn from the quote stories. And then we've mentioned many times that the Torah is not a storybook, but how much we could learn for our own lives and our own lessons for ourselves. This, from the stories of the Adi Avis. And Be'et, Be'emes, it's the same thing here by the Mishka. The many Mephoshim speak about the, the reason why the Mishka is spoken about at such great length is to teach us, in other words, from the story of building the Mishka, to teach us all the lessons and the, le the lessons that we can learn. In other words, we do not have a Mishka today. Unfortunately, we don't have a base of Mikdash, and Yushalayim is not, is not built up. But, what do we have? We have this idea. We have lessons that we that we have to learn for ourselves. But asuli mikdash, and each person, and each person's home, and each person's environment, and each person's surrounding is supposed to resemble a mikdash. It's supposed to resemble a mishkan. And these are lessons that are taught to us how to go about creating that kind of kedusha, that kind of environment for ourselves. Rucham Shmulevitz. Zatzal in the Sichas Musar speaks of this Indian of the giving of tzedakah, the giving uh, that the, the giving that was given for the Mishkan. The Tzadik speaks about it, and he says, "What what is a uh, something that stands out about the giving of the Mishkan? What stands out is the pasuk says, May Eis Kol Ish Asher Yitvenu Liboy, the Nedivas Halev, the giving." from the heart. Azat Reb Chaim, Reb Chaim says a very interesting thing, that when a person gives tzedakah, and when a person does a chesed and gives to someone else, the only way to really do it, and the proper way to do it, is giving from the heart. Not just giving. Reb Chaim says, he says, you see by the Avnei Shoyam, the Nesiyim gave the Avnei Shoyam for the Big Day Kahuna. And yet, the Avnei Shoyam 
those stones were written about in the Torah. They're written last. And we know also that it's missing letters in the word of the Nisim, right? But the, it's written last. The threat of Chaim. Why? It, it's very possible that the Avnei Shoyam were the most expensive thing that was given, what, what, that was donated for the Mishkan and the Big Day Kahuna. Yet, why was it mentioned last? So Chaim brings down that the Or Chaim gives it gives an answer to this. He says that the entire Mishkan, like we wanted to say, was about the Divas Halev. It was about giving from the heart, not just giving. So what did the Nesim do? The Nesim gave a great deal. The Nesim said, listen, let everybody bring. And whatever is left, we're going to give. Unbelievable. Could you imagine if you're building, a, you have a building campaign, and someone came over to you and said, listen, I'm going to sit in the background, and whatever you need at the end, I'm going to give. We think it's an unbelievable, it's an unbelievable uh, donation. It's an unbelievable idea. Zot. The Orachayim, Zok the Rakhaim Shmulevitz, also, he says that the Nasiim risked totally being left out of this thing. And that can't be called Divas Halev. Divas Halev means that somebody, somebody's heart is just begging. He wants to give, he wants to do chesed. And I saw, if you, uh, I saw a very interesting thing on this this week also, the Sefer for Rapam Zatzal. Rapam has a Sefer on the parish that's called Ateris Abraham. Rapam says also something into, uh, interesting to human nature. He says there are different types of people who give tzedakah. He says one person likes to be the savior. He likes to be the savior. In other words, he stays home until he hears that the Rabbeim haven't been paid in six months, and they're not getting paid before Yontif, and they're starving. So he's coming to save the day. He's coming out. The wonderful thing, unbelievable thing. But he hears that there at the end, there's a tzara, the yeshiva's about to close, the rabbeim are not getting paid. Then he steps out, he says, I am going to save the day. That's, that's a nice thing. It's a beautiful thing. He wants to be the savior. But Zucker Pond is another type of tzedakah. And that's the type of tzedakah, that's the way it's supposed to be. He said, there's a tzedakah of a person who is in a div lay. There's a tzedakah of a person that is always looking for the opportunities not to miss a chance at being able to do chesed. In other words, when it comes time to do something, when it comes time to do a chesed, when it comes time to give a tzedakah, he's the first one in line. He's not waiting for the end and to see, let me see if I could save the day, or I'll clean up, I'll make sure everything is done. In other words, listen, think of it. Imagine being told, right? Whatever's left, I'm gonna give. We said that's an unbelievable thing. Zucker of Pam, no. That's the other type of chesed. This type of chesed, a chesed that's a real chesed, tzedakah that's a real tzedakah, is somebody that right away, I'm here. I'm here, I'm first, what do you mean? That, 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 that's what I want to you know. I'm the person who wants to help. I'm not waiting for everybody else to do their thing. And that is a type of tzedakah, zucker of Pam, that a person is supposed to endeavor, a person is supposed to try to always keep in mind when a person wants to help somebody else, and that's a tzedakah. That's why the, from the Mishkan, it says, May ace kol ish asher yidvenu libay. That they gave from the heart. They gave, and, and, and we all know that something that's given from the heart, most of the time, the person that you're giving it to, and the person that you're helping, can also tell. He can also feel, they can also feel, what, how you're giving it, and whether it's given from the heart. And uh, I just, I just want to end off with uh, another lesson that we could learn about tzedakah, something that we could learn from the Mishkan. It's an unbelievable Beis HaLevi. The Beis HaLevi says that the fact that Parshas Mishpatim is right before Parshas Teruma is not coincidental. As we said from the Nesiva Shalom, and nothing is coincidental, even though there's Ein Mukta Mu'ucha but there's still a reason why it would be out of place. There's still a reason why it would be out of, why it would be out of line. Zokta Beis Alevi. The reason why Parshas Teruma is right after Parshas Mishpatim, he says, to teach you a lesson about tzedakah. That when you give tzedakah, it has to be with all the correct dine mamanis that you learned last week. You can't give tzedakah from money that's not Reina Gelt, that's not clean money. You might be thinking you're doing the most unbelievable mitzvah in the world, but that's not tzedakah. He says, once you learn, Parshas Mishpatim Zokta Beis 
and you learn, and once the Yidin, well, how did the Nadavis of the Mishkan come only after they knew about not stealing and no interest and no all these kind of things and no sheker and no and then going through bez and all the uh, myriad of halachas that we learned last week. You want to know how you get tzedakah? This is how you get tzedakah. First of all, you give it from your heart. You give it because you want to give it. You don't give it because uh, there's something left. I guess I'm going to do it. And second of all, we have to know the lesson of the Beis HaLevi, that when it comes time to actually give it to Dukkah, we have to ascertain that that money is money that's roy to give to Dukkah. It's money that we did by following the Torah, by following all the Dina. And let's talk to remember, let's try to remember these important lessons and, uh, and, and realize that giving tzedakah and doing chesed and being taka giving in a dava and giving of your time and, get, and giving it's not something that should be taken lightly it's not something it's something sometimes that requires a little bit of thought and just a little more heart just with a little more effort with a little more pushing yourself up there and not waiting for everybody else you can accomplish so much more so. Yeah.